Well, we realize that on any given Sunday, there are people here from many different places, many different walks of life, different faith traditions. But we recognize that you are here because your soul calls you to this place and this time. And that whatever path your spiritual path has been, we trust that this day will be an opportunity to further enhance that and to sweeten the experience for you. We begin with a statement of oneness, which says there's one presence and one power in our life, and it's printed in your bulletin or printed on the screen. So would you join me together in affirming this now? There's only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the good, omnipotence. And as you may be comfortable, please join your hands together or join the hand of one near you as we open in this time of community prayer. We give thanks for this opportunity to come together once again, one more time. We do pause to remember there is one presence and one power known by many names and yet defined truly by none. It has been said that God is love. And that's more than God is loving. It means that God is the pure essence of love. And that love is perhaps one of the greatest ways that we come to know and experience the God presence. This day we explore what it means to open to that love in ways that are healing, liberating. What does it mean to be willing to trespass our own self-imposed boundaries and limitations? And how do we cooperate and invite this presence of love into our life to show us our blind spots? to reveal what we may have not yet been able to see so that we can find whatever we're seeking and the doors may be open to whatever it is we need opened. We realize this is a divine appointment and we say yes and allow it to be so. And for this, we are truly blessed and we are truly grateful. And so we say thank you, God. Thank you, God, and so it is. The first stage in love is to believe that there is only one kind of love. The middle stage is to believe that there are many kinds of love and that the Greeks had a different word for each of them. The last stage is to believe that there is only one kind of love. The unabashed eros of lovers, <clears throat> the sympathetic philia of friends, Agape giving itself away freely, no less for the murderer than his victim. These are all varied manifestations of a single reality. To lose yourself in another's arms, or in another's company, or in suffering for all who suffer, including the ones who inflict suffering. To lose yourself in such ways is to find yourself what it's all about. It's what love is. Of all the powers, love is the most powerful and the most powerless. It is the most powerful because it alone can conquer that final and most impregnable stronghold, which is the human heart. It is the most powerless because it can do nothing except by consent. Love is not primarily an emotion, but an act of the will. When Jesus told us to love our neighbors, he was not telling us to love them in the sense of responding to them with a cozy, emotional feeling. On the contrary, he's telling us to love our neighbors in the sense of being willing to work for their well-being, even if it means sometimes just leaving them alone. Thus, in Jesus' terms, we can love our neighbors without necessarily liking them. In fact, liking them may stand in the way of loving them by making us sentimentalists instead of honest friends. 
When Jesus talked to the Pharisees, he didn't say, there, there, everything's going to be all right. He said, how can you speak good when you're evil? And he said that to them because he loved them. He was challenging them. This does not mean that liking may not be a part of loving, only that it doesn't have to be. Sometimes liking follows on the heels of loving. It's hard to work for somebody's well-being very long without coming in the end to rather liking her too. So let's just take a deep breath. That's a lot of words. God speaks to us through words sometimes. And God speaks to us through silence. Our job is to keep the heart open and to be receptive time and time again. And so this morning we do open our hearts to whatever it is God will say in whatever words we can hear in whatever space we're in this morning. We thank you, God, for being ever-present and for loving us in every stage and every phase and every kind of love. And so it is. Amen.